In this interview, Julie Elliott discusses the process, meaning, and relevance of her work. Since the untethered creativity of her childhood, Julie has gradually refined her practice and now works primarily with ideas of experience, intuition, and introspection. Letting her medium guide her, Julie ritually engages with the modalities of head, heart, and body. She works through the layers of her work to emit the same feeling and volition with which she paints. Though the artistic community of Lake Country invigorates her, Julie's primary inspirations are literature, color, and theory. Highly autobiographical, her introspection and inspiration combine to constitute an artistic practice which is evocative rather than literal. I'm from a really large family, nine children. I'm the second eldest. And so we didn't get out much. We didn't go to a lot of museums or art galleries. But my mom um, was a master seamstress and very creative. And I, I would say we were encouraged to, to make things, to invent, you know, our own games. So for sure it was creative. Um, there was a lot of, you know, materials around, drawing, painting, paper, that kind of thing. Um, but not a lot of formal instruction. When I was, uh, I think, 21, I signed up for a drawing class uh, with Brian Riley in Vernon. And in those days it was Okanagan College. And the college had these satellite uh, campuses around. And so we headed off to the Army Barracks in Vernon. And that was my first sort of introduction to a, a formalized class and I loved it and from then on I, I took courses through the college every year um, I was working full-time at Hiram Walker at the time the distillers in Winfield and uh, so I would take one or two classes at night and then when that job was over I went to finish my um, diploma of fine arts full-time at the college so it took me eight years to do a two-year diploma I think the main thing that I'm, I'm holding as I start a new painting is that I want to have an experience and I want the viewer to have an experience. So, so the way I prepare for a painting is uh, I have a morning practice that, I, that I've done for 15 years. I journal, uh, meditate, sometimes I sing. Um, read and I sit and look at the art that's around me you know, pieces in process and it's all a way to um, to ground myself and sort of get get rid of the clutter of the everyday and somehow access a deeper place and then when I start the painting so I would move from that morning practice straight into my to my studio time so then when I'm ready to start a painting I try to sort of forget about all of that. It, it, it's like a clearing and then paint in a way that is, uh, it, you would say, intuitive or process-oriented where um, the painting and the way the paint is responding to what I'm doing, that's what tells me what to do next. As opposed to something outside myself, like a sketch, you know, a, a preliminary sketch or or an idea that I say, okay, I'm going to do a piece about this. Sometimes that comes in at the very end, as I've, I put a lot of layers in my paintings. So sometimes, you know, maybe after 10 or 12 layers, I'll start to see, oh yeah, I'm reading about, you know, non-duality right now, and this painting, actually this painting right here, um, has all these intersections of, of going this way or that way, which would be dualistic thinking, and I'm thinking about a non-dualistic idea where there aren't opposites, where, where we have the capacity to not judge or compare. And so that gave me the idea for putting a spiral over top of the, over top of the surface. So it's intuitive and um, a journey where I don't really know where I'm going, but at the same time I gently hold a phrase or an idea that comes through or that I'm working with in that morning practice that I described. 
I'm, I'm always trying to paint simple paintings like that, that draw you in because they're strong compositionally, um, very um, clear and um, resolved, I would say. But then once the viewer's drawn in, I want them to find other layers of surprise that, that you don't see at the first glance. So, you know, the multi-layer is literally there, you know, there's like many layers in the paint, but also the ideas or the, uh, sometimes I have words hidden, hidden underneath the paint or, you know, when you get up close, you'll see something different than, than when you're really far away. So that's what I'm striving for. I think I've always been quite autobiographical in my, in my art. You know, um, when I was at college, uh, you know, when I was finishing my diploma 24 years ago, I had an experience, this was maybe the first time I experienced this, where, you know, I was in a drawing class late in the day, everyone had left, and I was there by myself, and I remember everything about it, the music that I had on my, you know, whatever Walkman we had in those days probably. Um, I remember the room, I remember what I was using, and it was this experience of deep connection to what I was making, you know, the being fully present. But I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew exactly what I was doing. And that's the first time I experienced that. And then realizing that I had created this drawing that was full of symbol for things that were going on in my life right then. It was like a, a journal entry um, done in charcoal and, and pastel. And ever since I had that experience, I think I really have um, drawn my inspiration from my day-to-day -day life. So I feel like I'm inspired by where I live, like the, the beauty of living on orchards and being in the Okanagan. But I don't specifically, that's not my subject matter. It affects me, that it inspires me, but I'm really expressing my day-to-day -day thoughts. Not even, my, not even, you know, like Gaffy Falk who's painting, you know, her shoes. It's not that my subject matter is ordinary day-to-day -day things, but the things that I'm thinking from day-to-day -day or feeling from day-to-day. And so that's been a continuum all the way through. I think, um, you know, I've learned a lot, I've, I've read a lot about the different ways that we know things, the different, that um, the way I've studied it is that we actually have three intelligence centers that aren't separate, you know, they're aligned for sure. But I think that my art practice the way I do that morning practice and then the way I work intuitively is coming from um, other intelligence centers than just my head. So I think because I try to paint from that deeper place that I talked about, that people connect from that place too. And maybe you call that a place of spirituality, and I think that place of no words and non-articulation is a deeper place where we all connect. So Vicki Marshall was an artist who had visited our visual forum class at college and she epitomized the, the happening artist for me. So she, she was traveling all over the world, I think she was from England originally, and um, we saw her images of, you know, downtown city streets and cityscapes. and they were really powerful. Then she came to the Okanagan and did some sort of a sabbatical here and was painting the orchards around, you know, she was painting my world. And I, well, I don't know if I got it completely in that one instance, but it started the process of me realizing that it wasn't where I lived that was going to make the difference. It was what, what I would do with this world. And I do have this quote that I used in an article that I wrote for the um, Kelowna Art Gallery Nexus catalog. And it's a, it's a well-known Maria Rilke uh, quote in, from his advice in letters to a young poet. If your everyday life seems poor, don't blame it. Blame yourself. Admit to yourself that you are not enough of a poet painter. 
to call forth its riches, because for the Creator there is no poverty and no poor indifferent place. So I felt I could live in Oyama and call forth its riches or call forth the riches of my life.